many of you have watched lots of our videos now about chemistry and I'm really quite excited because our colleagues in the F School of Physics and Astronomy have decided to make some f videos about physics, about the different symbols in physics. And this is going to give me an opportunity to go over to the physics department and look at something that I really wanted to see for a long time and I think you'll find quite fun too. Well, it's not very far, but we have to go outside. But unusually for England, it's sunny. So I go over to physics um, from time to time, and I meet physicists in the lab from time to time. So we have the School of Chemistry over there. And in fact, my lab is the one just behind the tree over there. And then we have the school, uh, maths and physics over here. I think that there is a, um, I think there is friendly collaboration. Anyway, my grandfather, my father, and my mother-in-law, and my father-in-law were all physicists. So um, I have physics in my family, and my son is a physics teacher too. So <clears throat> I feel very close to physicists. Well, we're in a... I suppose it's the tea room in the <coughs> physics department. And I've actually given a talk in here, I can't remember what it was about, to some visiting delegation. Anyway, this is what I want to show you. It's a blackboard which was written on by Einstein when Einstein came to visit Nottingham in the 1930s, it, on the 6th of June, 1930. Even in, the 19th, in 1930, when he came, he was really a huge personality in physics. And so they wanted to keep it. And this is part of the blackboard, part of his lecture. And you can see here it is signed, A. Einstein, <coughs> 6th of June, 1930. So they must have realized at the time that they were going to keep this. I met somebody who told me that the lecture that Einstein gave was a complete disaster because in those days Einstein either didn't speak English at all or spoke it only badly, so he gave the lecture in German and it was known it was going to be in German. So the university invited two different sorts of students, physics students because they could understand the physics and German students, those studying the German language, because they could understand what was being said. But it was a disaster because the physicists couldn't understand anything that was being said, and the German students couldn't understand the physics. So I think nobody except perhaps the professor and some of the lecturers, who probably understood German, really knew what the lecture was about at all. Well, I think it's... It makes me feel very privileged to see this and to realize that even famous scientists like Einstein couldn't really use the blackboard very clearly. And so I might have had difficulty to follow the lecture, but I would probably have been among those who pr would have understood the German but not the physics. Do you speak German, do you? Yes, I worked in Germany for a few months. I don't speak German very well, but enough to follow lectures. Well, go on then. Tell me what, what's up there. I think it says uni unified field theory here. I think that it is absolutely great that my colleagues here in physics have the same sort of enthusiasm for their subject that we do in chemistry. And the first few videos are really quite exciting. I've been watching them instead of doing my work. And I hope you'll do the same. Yes, always carry it around with me just in case I need it. Yeah, yeah, very handy if you're doing, if you're stuck in a, in a, in a delayed train or... Oh, 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 okay. It's a nice balance. Gravitational lensing is the tool that lets us measure its mass. So we don't have to touch anything. We're using basically a magnet to, to, to move the sample in. Now we can come back again here. I think I'm going to get run over in a minute. <laughs> 
I've now actually read the explanation here and know what this blackboard is. This is what um, I would call a sort of menu at the beginning of the lecture, the different points that Einstein was going to go through in his lecture. So probably he had this on one side and said another board where he was doing the maths and then he would come back and say now to point number three and so on. And that's probably where it was preserved. What do you think that's worth? I have no idea. I, probably not very much, you know. But um, I, think, I think it is more of sentimental value and than monetary value. Um, there are some quite nice stories here as well that somebody took the piece of chalk that Einstein had used and um, <coughs> broke it in half and gave half to the university and kept the other half for himself. It also says that Einstein borrowed five pounds from somebody. Five pounds in those days was a lot of money. It was a whole week's salary for a lecturer, perhaps even more. But he forgot to give it back. And there is a letter here from his wife saying, I'm really sorry that my husband doesn't deal with money and sorry you haven't had the money. And so I've now arranged to have it transferred and it should be coming soon. I must say that I can't remember any lecturers ever coming in recent times and demanding money, but doubtless with the recession that this might happen.